Hi, my name is James and I'm Paint Miniatures. I cut parts. I glue them together. And I paint them. This is Spoon 37 Minis. So, as I said in the previous video, you can see that this paint holder, the Citadel Miniatures Paint Handle XL, is extremely top heavy, particularly when you have a metal miniature on top. It might be okay with a plastic model, because of course the plastic models are considerably lighter, and even though this is only partly assembled, this metal miniature is quite heavy. So, do be careful when picking them up. And of course, the other thing is, with a metal miniature, primer is doubly important because it'll stop the paint chipping quite so much. If you have a really good primer, the paint will stick so much better to the miniature. So if you do tip it over in future when it's got paint on it, you'll stand more of a chance of getting away with it without the paint chipping. So again, applying primer is an extremely important step. So here we have a metal Hive Tyrant. This is the second edition Hive Tyrant that was available in the sort of early to mid 90s. Um, this is a second hand model I got off eBay. I've had to strip the paint off. And what I actually found was the, I thought the paint was really, really bad initially. The paint wasn't that thick. It turned out that they'd used about half a bottle of super glue trying to glue the torso together. So I also had to bathe the main sort of torso and legs area in acetone because of course there was so much super glue on it. I couldn't really get it apart or paint it well with all that super glue there. So I had to bathe it in acetone for several days in a glass jar before all of that would sort of soften up and could be peeled away. So if it looks particularly clean, it's been through a number of processes to get to this point where it appears brand new, bare metal, ready for applying primer to it. Now, since stripping the paint off, this model has gone through a number of quite obvious changes. Uh, the first one is the fact that it's now sitting on a 60mm base. The original 40mm round base was so small that the legs have been bent inwards in order that the model could stand on it properly. It literally didn't have enough room for even the two feet to sit level. So I've had to correct that, change the 40mm round base for a 60mm one. And then the other obvious thing is that it's only partially assembled. This is what we call sub-assemblies. So here we have just the legs and torso glued together and then those in turn glued to the base. That's one sub-assembly. The reason why we do this, having left off the head and the arms and the tail, it makes it very much easier to paint all of the details, particularly where they join or details that would be covered up by say like an arm near to a leg or something like that where you would otherwise have a great deal of difficulty simply getting the brush in to apply paint and certainly if you want to do a good quality paint job it's often a good idea to paint it in sub assemblies now speaking of sub assemblies as i don't want the videos to be crazy crazy long um, i will just be painting this body today um, i have all of the arms tail and head 
been drilled and pinned to wooden blocks. So they're actually available to paint separately. I did apply primer right after shooting this. Uh, so that will come in a follow-up video, which again, it's just to keep the length of the videos down. So it's not like, you know, watching 10 minutes for one thing and then watching in an hour and a half for another. Okay, so here I'm applying the same Vallejo surface primer in black as you saw on the Goliath Gang Leader, which is actually in the background. Um, obviously this is a metal model, so it's applied ever so slightly differently. I mean, it still paints straight on, but I have thinned it a little bit more because the metal surface actually has slightly more of a texture to it and therefore it needs to be ever so slightly thinner to run into all of the cracks and crevices. The other thing about doing this is the paint is now exceptionally thin, so it won't obscure any details, but it does mean that metal may show through when this first coat is dry, so even though it's primer, you're still going to want to do a second coat of primer in order to have every detail properly covered with paint ready for applying the colour coats. As I'm applying this primer, you will notice that I'm deliberately skipping certain areas. This again is because it's in sub-assemblies and will need gluing together once it's painted. So I'm actually skipping any area that would be a mating face, which would be, say, for example, where I'm painting now around where the head glues on. I'm only painting around the edges. I'm not painting the sort of flat surface with a little cutout in it where the head actually glues onto. This wasn't needed with the last models you saw because those were fully assembled and no pieces were left off so I could cover the whole model from head to toe in paint including the base. So that's just a little difference there between painting a sub-assemblies and painting a fully assembled model. As you can see, I'm taking a very similar approach to the Goliath Gang Leader that I painted in the previous video, just taking it nice and slowly, being sure to get the brush into every crack and crevice, make sure that every part of the model just has a very thin coating of this Vallejo surface primer on every last bit, apart from, as I said before, the mating faces where it's going to be glued together later. So I've got the whole model covered in probably two coats of black primer. It will be ideally set up to take the colour coats. Now for this one I'll be painting it in the High Fleet Beer Moth colours which seems appropriate for an older Tyranid model. And in fact my whole Tyranid army is quite old so it seems like the best sort of modern eye-catching colour scheme that would suit all of these old models. Uh, so what will actually happen is the carapace will remain black but all of the flesh will be painted in various reds starting with Games Workshop Mephiston red base. So it may sound weird to be painting something black in order to then paint it red but it just makes sure that the base colour will stick to the model no matter what it's made of and no matter what condition the colour coat paint is actually in. Thank you. 
if you are new to the hobby or if you just started getting your first miniatures and paints one of the things you may notice is that I am painting things conventionally I have no intention of using Games Workshop contrast paints so if I were going to use the contrast paints however I would not be using a black surface primer they demand a light colour to go over both of the colours suggested are a light grey or like a light bone colour and then you paint over the very transparent contrast paints in order to pick out the various details and where it pulls up it will be thicker and darker and where it's thinner it is lighter. I'm not going to use that method because although it's quick it gives me a lot less control and in my opinion takes a lot more time to tidy up. But each their own, I'm used to doing things this way, if you prefer the contrast system that's your choice. Okay, you can see here I'm just rounding out the last of the details, just making sure every last bit of the silver metal colour is covered up by black primer in order that I can call this primer stage done, or at least the first coat of it done. I'm not planning to video the second coat because it's just painting black over black, so likely next time you'll see this, it will be having the first coat of red. Right, thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you did, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little uh, bell shaped icon so you get notifications as to when the next video will be out, hopefully that will be soon, thank you.